I think in Africa it is a circle of poverty, recycling poverty itself. So it's to break that one, it is very important to address, to invest more on children than the, the older ones. Okay, you can keep continue to support. The, uh, so cash plus means it could be a household level, but plus is the most important one, which is child focused. So we need to do on the plus one, child focused, so that children get support so that they achieve their development and break as adults break their intergenerational poverty which we are getting from our longitudinal study young lives that still young people are growing into ad poor adults that's where we have to address that make sure that the plus makes full focus on children so that they develop then they change their status from their own parents so that intergenerational poverty will be broken in, in Africa. Um, what would I like to see happen, I think, is broadly speaking, um, you know, more of the evidence, there's so much evidence being generated by, you know, people working using a variety of methods in very different settings, and I'd like to see more of that being put to use. So as governments think about how to design programs, how to redesign them, as donors think about what to fund, you know, the m more reliance on what we're learning, and so not just doing things a certain way because that's how they've been done so far, but sort of really taking this evidence on board and saying maybe we need to change things. And I think another thing that I'd like to see sort of more attention to is we, we focus a lot on the amount of money that's given. Um, we don't focus as much on sort of when it's given and how it's given. And I think those can be quite important as well. So to just give you an example, we do a lot of cash transfers and social protection programs which are aimed at improving education outcomes. We never think about the fact that, you know, in places where people have to pay for things like school supplies or school fees, those are lumpy expenses. And instead, we just give people money all year round and sort of expect that they'll save up the amount that they'll need to, um, to pay for the school fees and things like that, which might happen once or twice a year, right? And so what we do right now is we say, can we help them save better? But really what we should be doing is saying, why can't we just give them more money when they're going to need it for this, right? And I can't think of any programs that do that yet. And it just seems like sort of an obvious thing to do. So that direction, sort of thinking carefully about what people's constraints are and kind of working with them rather than just sort of expecting them to make the best of what we're giving them. That's the direction I'd like to see stuff move. Um, building a lot of uh, uh, evidence about the impact of uh, cash transfers and uh, uh, the new um, the new questions really are how to tackle uh, secondary objective, uh, secondary outcomes that uh, uh, other than uh, immediate poverty, right, and uh, such as nutrition and uh, um, <coughs> child marriage, uh, um, outcomes that really are more, uh, uh, that are quite complex to uh, tackle just through uh, cash transfers. And uh, in the last years, it's been uh, um, extremely interesting to see the um, uh, how new uh, um, uh, programs, especially uh, Cash Plus, where the plus can be very uh, can mean very different things, uh, have started to test really uh, different uh, interventions. How take these uh, kind of uh, um, a different additional features can really contribute uh, to improve the life of uh, children uh, in, uh, in different aspects. We also are more increasingly aware that cash transfers by themselves are insufficient to actually create these sustainable and large-scale changes. So um, as far as our work is concerned, we are sort of shifting the attention away from single interventions like cash transfers or public programs to look at the um, combination of um, and, and combination of interventions and, and kind of multiple integrated programming that uh, combines different instruments and also addresses the, the whole gamut of um, outcomes and underlying factors that expose children and families to poverty. That's one of the one of the, the things so we are looking at the impacts of the so-called cash plus or social protection plus interventions um, I think there is also an, um, a shift uh, from sort of narrowly targeted social protection programs into looking at how how these could be actually expanded into a more universal um, approaches where rather than um, poverty targeted actually um, the social protection um, is accessible um, as a rights-based um, 
support to all of the families in need. Um, I think that's another change. The third change is uh, kind of shifting and broadening, broadening our lens from looking only at childhood poverty, but uh, looking at more broadly as a household level poverty and how gender and age um, dynamics actually affect the, the experiences of poverty <coughs> and also access to social protection. There are a couple of really big challenges I see going forward. Um, that very positive movement of disaggregating, of seeing the child not as just a household member, I think needs to move still further forward because there's the danger of sort of isolating the child and not thinking about the whole context. Um, and that's very much connected to children's own voice and agency, what children say about their relationships with their sisters and brothers, with their parents, with their communities. Um, and particularly being able to listen to children who may have become isolated from their communities, children who are living in the streets, children who have become disconnected, sometimes children who are in institutions, um, children who are not easy to consult because they may not trust other people. It really takes a long time to build up trust where children can express what it is they have to express about their relationships with their family, with their community, with society. So that's, that's one area where I think we really need to move forward. A second one concerns international issues. Uh, you know, today we've been speaking a lot about poverty in Africa. Um, and there are things that have been looked at in other countries as supposedly solutions to poverty. And there's a real danger that those get exported uh, to African countries in ways that are very damaging. Um, I'm thinking specifically of cer certain social work policies here in Britain um, and that we've seen, uh, you know, not necessarily being implemented by governments in uh, countries in the South, but sometimes being implemented by private charities um, that, you know, have this discourse around um, saving individual children, uh, sometimes through international adoption. Um, it can play into trafficking of children. Um, it can play into uh, idea on the part of society and also on the part of parents in poverty that they're not the best people to raise their children and that somewhere else is some magic solution to the point where a struggling mother may think that entrusting her child to an orphanage or international adoption might be giving her child the best chance and not realizing some of the very negative things that go on behind that. I think there's a very big danger if we're not working on this question internationally together because we can learn things from children in poverty in Africa. We can learn things from children in, in poverty in Europe where poverty has not been eliminated and where we see a lot of the dangers uh, that could be imposed elsewhere.